Thank you for coming this evening to this uh, workshop on why we as Christians need to care for God's creation. And my name is Craig Sorley. I live and work in Kenya and have been there the past seven years. And this evening, I would like to open our time with a word of prayer um, that the Lord would come and be with us in this room while we explore this topic from his perspective rather than my perspective or the world's perspective. We want to explore this from his perspective this evening. So let me open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the chance to come together and to focus our minds and our hearts on a topic that many of us as Christians have often neglected. And uh, Father, we ask that you would come and be present in this room with us, that your words uh, would, from your scripture, would sink into our hearts, and that, Lord, we would uh, come away with a better understanding of how you want us as your people to interact with and to care for the creation that you have made. So just bless us at this uh, time and help us to um, honor you through what we learn and what we do as a result of what we learn. And we pray this in your name. Amen. This evening, I'm going to give you kind of a crash course, so to speak, on some of the material that we present in our workshops and seminars in Kenya. Um, we have a ministry in Kenya called Care of Creation. And on the screen there, you will see my family, uh, my wife Tracy and my two boys, Nathan on the left and Aaron there in the middle. And instead of going into an exhaustive depth on each of the little topics that we're going to look at tonight, I'm going to give you kind of a brief summary. It's going to begin with a very brief summary of some of the environmental problems facing Kenya. And then we're going to look into why the church needs to be challenged in terms of responding to that. And then we're going to look a little bit into what is a biblical worldview uh, and why is there such a need for such a worldview, because we often look at this topic from a, a viewpoint, I feel, that is really not biblical. And then we're going to look at what is some of the actual words of Scripture that can help define what our worldview might be on this particular topic. We're going to look a little bit into agriculture. How do we think about agriculture? Because that is probably the single biggest way in which people in Kenya alter the creation, whether for good or for bad. And then we're also going to look at, very briefly, what are some of the results we're seeing when people start understanding that God does indeed want them to be the best possible stewards of creation. So join with me for the next 40 minutes or so. Care of Creation Kenya, we have a mission statement and I've kind of revised our mission statement to be a little more succinct and uh, to put it in summary fashion. What are we about as an organization? Well, we want to spread a passion for Christ. That's central to what we're doing. And for the stewardship of his creation. And why are we doing this in Kenya? One of the primary reasons we're doing it in Kenya is for the sake of the poor because a creation that is in poor health means people that are also in poor health. So that, in a nutshell, is kind of a summary statement of what we're trying to accomplish through our ministry there. So tonight I want us to begin thinking biblically about our response to a groaning creation. And right there in the New Testament, in Romans chapter 8, verse 22, we have this Rather interesting passage saying that the whole creation groans as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. So it's interesting to note that something that was written centuries ago has something very relevant to say about what's happening in our world today. And uh, for those of you who have gone through the pains of childbirth, you know that that is an intense pain. And that is fairly accurate to what we're seeing today in Africa. So, what is the essence of the problem that we're trying to address as a Christian missions organization? The problem is a world 
that is desperate for a Christ-centered leadership in this topic of creation stewardship. It's a topic that is often never discussed in the churches in Kenya, and it's often rarely discussed in churches here in the U.S. This is just a photo of some of the garbage problems we have in the city of Nairobi, and we live not too far away from there. I'm not going to be exhaustive in the problems facing Kenya, but I do want to summarize just a few of them. Deforestation is one of our biggest problems in Kenya, and the government itself uh, has reported that we've lost 50% of our forest cover in the past 30 years. So that's just half a generation, if you consider a generation to be in the 60 to 70 year uh, ballpark range. Here is a quote from Christians in the Kajabi area. It's an older man that made this statement one time when we were giving a workshop. He said, if Christians who have gone to heaven were to return to Kenya today, they would want to leave immediately and go back to heaven. Now, obviously, I think anybody would want to leave immediately and go back to heaven, right? But what he was trying to emphasize is his dismay and his concern for how the forests in Kajabi have disappeared so quickly. And he spoke about how beautiful the forests used to be when he was a younger man. So this was his reaction. Women in Kenya are having to go farther and farther to obtain the firewood that they need, and firewood is a key and important resource for cooking your food all across Africa. It is the resource of choice. This is the edge of the Rift Valley, and it used to be carpeted with an acacia woodland, but that acacia woodland has all but disappeared, and now the women of Indea spend up to 30 hours a week just collecting firewood and water, at least Half of the women in this community do that. And they're going down to a portion of the valley that is not a forest necessarily, but it's more of an open grassland. And they're gathering firewood that, by our standards here in Minnesota, is really kindling, what you use to start a fire. It is an arduous task for many of them. And as the decades have transpired in Africa, women are having to go farther and farther to obtain their firewood. Uh, you can notice this woman here doesn't even have shoes on, and she has come up a very steep, rocky incline of about 1,500 feet to come back with her load of firewood to her village. Now we take a once forested mountain slope like this, and we cut all the trees down. What happens to the water that is meant to bless the landscape when that deforestation comes? A lot of times that water floods off that landscape, and in doing so, it takes a lot of the soil with it. So one of the questions a lot of Kenyans have asked me, why are we having more droughts and more floods? And it's actually interesting. Some of the people don't recognize the critical role of forests in terms of capturing and storing water on a landscape. And so here the farmers are, the rain comes, and then a month later, it's so dry, and their crops are beginning to wither, and they are wondering, why is this drought coming along after we had such good rains? And most of the water has washed off the landscape in very rapid fashion. So when you lose your topsoil and you lose your water, how does that affect food production? Okay, it, it lowers food production. So that's a big problem. Uh, deforestation and water resources are tightly intertwined in terms of how the health of those resources are maintained. Healthy grazing land as made by God. Kenya, a lot of Kenya is open grassland. 